we've been invited to showcase our coffee at the London Coffee Festival. Sierra Nevada is a place where some wonderful coffees come from. How much have you got? I think we're absolutely fine to take that. I wish you hadn't done that. Uh, day two, 7 a.m., uh, flight to Santa Marta. Bring on the coast. Boom. So we went to the north of the country to the Sierra Nevada mountains because that part of Colombia is well known for a prized fair trade organic Arabica bean that just had that really typical north taste of chocolate, hazelnut and a sweetness to it. We were in town to visit a coffee farm our contacts at Lojas had suggested. They fitted the bill perfectly, but since John had committed us to a container the stakes were now really high. If their coffee wasn't good enough, we would have to go elsewhere. The journey up into the Sierra Nevada mountains was ridiculous. The journey was just so bumpy and ridiculous. so slow that my Fitbit actually thought I was walking. It was hardcore for eight hours. So, um, we've just arrived at the coffee plantation. Uh, it's taken us all day to get here. We're at something like 1600 meters above sea level and uh, we're shot so enough filming let's hit the sack when we woke up in the morning seeing the sun rise over the mountains was one of the most magical experiences of my life and just absolutely breathtaking yeah. uh, it's six o'clock now and it's a real real special day for us because later we're going out with the pickers to start picking the beans that we're hoping to buy <laughs> Kill you. I'm, I am always shocked and awed at the level of hospitality that you get from people that you know live remotely. We've just been served breakfast, so it's about like 7:30 in the morning, and had this just super delicious, really light uh, potato broth, and then we had this fish tempered. What's it called? Poca chico. Poca chico. Poca chico. It's a freshwater fish from up in the mountains. Cooked with a spice that we can't work out, but just look how tasty this looks. And then, interestingly, you get served hot chocolate. And they put little chunks of cheese in there. Not bad, eh? We might do a recipe for this. The farm we were on was owned by Don Bernardo and his wife Maria. Bernardo uh, turned out to be quite an incredible character really. 78, 10 kids, 31 grandkids. He turned up there when he was 16 and started planting Arabica coffee bushes. It's just this incredible foresight of this 16 year old. Think what you were doing when you were 16. Incredible. And so we're literally going up the side of a mountain <laughs> and we consider ourselves pretty yeah, fit yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. right? Come on. But he is just zooming up the side of the mountain. It's like a gazelle. We just picked these cherries from two different bushes, two different varieties, growing right next to each other. So. Mmm. It's actually quite sweet and lovely. And that's the beans. Once we really got into the plantation and we started interacting and chatting a little bit with the, the coffee pickers and I didn't quite understand that essentially they're traveling coffee pickers. The level of skill and the difficulty is just incredible. So uh, this is Jorge, Jorge, John, nice to meet you. Is Jorge from here and his family? He's from Tolima also. How many uh, kilos, how many sacks does he pick a day? 170 kilos. How many bags is that? 17. 17? It's humbling when you see it. You see all the things that are involved. And all the, the hard work and sweat that goes into it. Yeah. It's incredible how manual the process actually is. So the coffee cherries that were picked yesterday from the fields have been brought in. They're coming down into this pulpa, which is banging them together and separating out the cherry from the coffee bean. And so do you get these cherries, which have been smashed apart, and then you get these, which are the coffee beans. They get washed, and then they get put into the fermentation tank, which makes a big difference to what they taste like. Coffee cherry has been a waste product for years, but now, 
it's been turned into a coffee flour. So what Bernardo's doing in here is he's fermenting the coffee. It needs to be fermented to start releasing the body, the flavor, the bouquet, and the taste. Minimum of 24 hours, and then it goes into this trough to be washed. Now what happens is the premium quality beans, they sink to the bottom because they're the highest in density. The second quality stuff, it rises to the top, and that's what this looks like. Now what they do with this is they'll take it back and wash it again, whereas the premium quality stuff gets taken over here to be dried out. So stage one of the drying process is to get rid of all the water. And then it ends up here on the roof. Now this is the stuff that didn't make the grade. And as you can see, it's got cherries that are not great. They have to go through it by hand. And then that's what ends up in your instant coffee. Good luck with that. Maria has very kindly allowed me to use her kitchen and uh, me and Colin wanted to say thank you for uh, welcoming us into their home and so I wanted to make the muffins with ingredients that come from these hills. Let's start with uh, getting the wet ingredients together. One egg, crack it open and beat it. Add 250 mils of full fat milk into a bowl. Add the egg in, a teaspoon of vanilla essence, half a teaspoon of salt, 60 mils of oil and then just whisk all those ingredients together. So that's the wet ingredients done, now we've got to get the dry ones done. 100 mils of coffee flour into your bowl through a sieve, and then you want 100 mils of regular flour. Then you want 50 grams of cacao powder, 175 grams of golden caster sugar, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now simply add in the wet ingredients and gradually bring it together. Then take your parchment paper. What are you looking for is you kind of want a, a nice square and then you want to kind of just get them in but twist. See how it kind of twists there, just get it all down so it fits in. What's going to help is if I just take a bit of the mixture, drop that in the bottom and that's going to help them stick down. So I'm just going to trim them and now get the rest of the mixture into the tin. Snap a piece of good quality chocolate and push it into the bottom. Once you've done all of those, grab some cacao nibs, sprinkle those on top, then it's ready to go into the oven. Okay, so the muffins need to go into a hot oven, about 175 to 20 to 25 minutes. Now, I have no idea if this is at the right temperature, but let's give it a go. Okay, let's see how they're getting on. burnt on the top because the oven was uh, a bit hot but so this is Maria just been cooking for us for the last three days you ready you want to smell what are you saying yeah it's all right get on mouth open I remember <laughs> It was quite emotional leaving the farm. We'd really fallen in love with the people there. We'd got a sample of Bernardo's beans, but we'd still have to taste it. What if it didn't measure up? We were in Colombia to get the best tasting coffee available. And since John had committed us to a container, I was still feeling really uneasy. However, before we had the chance to decide, we had the offer of a lifetime. Okay, it's 4 a.m. in the morning uh, and we're off to the, see the Arawako tribe, which is an indigenous people of Colombia that are involved in the cultivation of cacao and coffee. So we're all completely beat, but it uh, should be a good day. It's about 4.30 in the morning. Uh, this feels like a truck stop, but it's just a saw on the side of a road. We're having a Tinto, which is a really traditional way to grab a cup of coffee in the morning in Colombia. And what it is essentially is it's an Americano. It's got some coffee and then they water it down. They serve it out of these kind of these jugs that, that are at you know the truck stop. And often they'll add you know cinnamon or sugar. Um, and it's yeah, it's not not too bad. So seven hours, two military checkpoints. We finally arrive on sort of like this plateau at the top of the mountain and. There had been a lot of cloudiness, a lot of un uncertainty around what exactly we were going to experience and what we were allowed to do and not allowed to do. And we just kind of looked at each other and we're like, okay, what now? <laughs> and then everything changed. It was breathtaking. We turned around this corner and 70 people all sat down calmly under the shade of the, of the trees. 
and the whole tribe was waiting for us. We just have travelled all the way up the Sierra Nevada mountains <laughs> to, meet the, to meet this troublemaker who thinks this is really funny. He's never seen a ginger before. <laughs> <laughs> no Westerners get to come up here and see this and it's because they sell coffee. The coffee is changing their lives because um, you know it's about sustainability. It's about about allowing them to use their means to change their life and to sustain their life. And this is the importance about provenance. You should know where your food and your drink comes from. See, this one agrees, don't you? We knew it was going to be special, but it's changed me. Just realizing what's involved and how beautiful and welcoming the people are and how just epically beautiful that part of the world is. Meeting the Arawakas was a once in a lifetime opportunity but now we had to get back to the business at hand. We had to taste the coffee from Bernardo, and even though we both desperately wanted to support Bernardo and his family, if his coffee didn't taste good enough, we'd have to go to another producer. And then, all of a sudden, it was all down to one cup of coffee. It was really, really the day.